Hello and welcome. I'm Ashley Prophet, and today I'm going to show you how to overlay your designs onto a screen stock photography image. We'll be using Photoshop and your designs. So let's get started. The first thing we want to do is open up Photoshop. I've started here with a blank canvas. I've started with a specific end goal in mind, meaning I know exactly where I'm going to be using this image. So I want to create a post for Instagram highlighting my free desktop wallpapers on my blog. And so I know that I want to create a square image at about a thousand by a thousand pixels. Whatever your end goal is, you need to know the dimensions for where that image will be used. And so as I've mentioned in previous tutorials, you want to make sure that somewhere in your workspace you have written down the dimensions of any places that you will be using it, your images. So for example, just like a quick facts of your dimensions <laughs> on a sticky note on your computer is a great time saver. So having the Facebook cover page dimensions, having your website home banner images dimensions, having blog post dimensions, all of those things are going to save you lots of time in the future. That's just an extra little added bonus today. For us to get started, what I'd like to do is, again, like I said, for a Facebook post, I'm highlighting and promoting my blog and telling viewers to go download my monthly wallpapers for their iPad or computer. We've opened up Photoshop. We're going to go File, New, and you're going to set your dimensions here. And this is where it's really helpful if you already have those just real quick on hand and know what those are. For Instagram, I'm going to do a thousand by a thousand and you want to make sure this is pixels. For anything digital, you're going to always do pixels here. And my resolution is going to be 72 and then I'm going to name it up here, Instagram post. Everything else looks great. Anytime you're doing something digitally online, it will be viewed on a screen or a computer. You want this to be RGB. Your color mode should be RGB. We use CMYK for print and RGB for digital. So click OK. So now we have our blank canvas, and now I want to add in my stock photography. So we're going to go File, Place Embedded, and I'm going to use my image here. So I'm just going to select it and hit Place. So now it's going to bring the image in. The reason I like to start with a canvas at the appropriate size instead of starting with the image so that I have a little bit more control over the placement of the end result. It just helps me feel a little bit more creative over how I crop the image. I like the way that looks and so all I did, I'm going to do it one more time so you can see, I went file, place, I selected the image, click place. It brings it in in its bounding box and so what you want to do to maintain proportions is hold your shift key while you pull and you can pull it as big as you want but make sure you fill that frame and again I say this every time but the beauty of the SC stock shop images are the high resolution so that you could scale this up real big and not lose any of the quality I think I'm going to scale it down just a little bit since we're highlighting the screen I want to make sure that we're getting lots of that in there so that looks good and now you just hit enter and your image is set. So now I need to bring in an image for this iPad. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do file, place embedded, and I've already grabbed a few options for me. Here's one, here's my October iPhone wallpaper and then a Bible verse one that I have done and then a screenshot of my blog. So those are all great options. I'm going to go ahead and pick this one just because it's got lots of color and I think it will help be able to see it better. So I click place. While it's in its bounding box, I want to rotate it so that it lines up perfectly as if it really, we really did actually take a picture of this on the screen. Okay, so you're just going to rotate it with your mouse. Hold the shift key again to make sure that you keep the proportions while you scale. Now it's not, obviously, now what we see here is that it doesn't fit perfectly. Okay, so one trick, a really simple trick, I'm going to, I'm going to actually increase this just a little bit to cover up those black edges. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually hide this. So I'm going to, I'm over here in the layers palette, I'm going to click the eyeball. So I'm going to hide it for a second. I'm also going to delete this extra layer so we don't get confused. So here um, on the styled stock layer, in our layers palette, we see we have the black screen here on the iPad. 
An easy way to do it would be to darken that image, but that doesn't work because the layer's black. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually, I'm gonna hide that layer, and then I'm gonna go here, and I'm gonna select with my magic wand, so I'm gonna click the W tool, or go over here in your tools palette, over here on the left of the screen, and click magic wand tool, and I'm gonna select, I'm gonna, I'm gonna click in the center of that iPad, and what it's gonna do is select all of that black. Then I'm gonna go back over here to my layers palette, and I'm gonna select my image, okay? And then, bear with me, this is like a really fun trick, but it might feel confusing. So what we've done is right now, my image, my layer is selected, but it's selected in the exact shape of that black portion. Do you see that? So what we wanna do though, is be able to delete this part of the image so that it looks as if it would um, on that iPad screen. So we're gonna go to select, inverse, and then I'm gonna delete. Now I get this box that says, could not complete request because the smart object is not directly editable. And I say, okay. So then I just wanna make sure you're gonna go layer, rasterize smart object. So now I can hit erase. So do you see that what I did there? I had this layer selected, okay? And I had specifically this black area here selected because I wanted everything that was beyond that from my digital, from my image to be deleted. And so I'm gonna back up and do it one more time. Okay, so I have it selected. I'm gonna go select inverse because I want what's on the outside. I don't want this to be deleted. I want what's beyond that to be deleted. And so then um, I rasterized the image. So I went image, actually I went layer, rasterize smart object. Anytime you embed an image, it is a smart object or even a pixel, an image that you've brought in, you, you probably need to rasterize if you're gonna do anything with it. So I'm gonna rasterize it and then I'm gonna just hit delete. And there goes all the extra. And so now I do control D and that deselects that and now I have this beautiful image that looks as if we took a picture of it and it looks really awesome. I'm gonna show you one more with one that has a white background. So we're gonna go place, embedded. Let's do, let's do this one. This might be a little wonky. But I'm gonna go ahead and rotate it so that it's correct visually. I'm gonna scale down, I don't know how much it would scale. We just want this to look like, oh hey, I took a picture of my website on my iPad with this beautiful white frosted donut and my little espresso with my pretty pink flowers. Okay, so I've got this on here. I'm gonna do the same thing I did before. Click the eyeball. And then I'm gonna go on my styled stock layer. I'm gonna click the W tool and select the black. And then I'm gonna go back to my image that I just brought in. And then I'm gonna do the same thing I did before. I'm gonna do layer rasterize smart object, select inverse, delete. And now I have a picture of my actual blog on there. Then you're done. So we're, you're gonna go save, Instagram post, make sure you always save the Photoshop version so that you can edit these layers in the future. That will save you tons of time. If for instance, you're gonna use the same image each month or periodically to announce different things, on a screen, you wanna save that and just bring those layers in. It'll make your life way easier. Then we're gonna do Command Shift Alt S, and that brings up this, which is a save for web, and this is just a really great tool to make sure that you can see everything at the appropriate dimensions. Everything looks great, so I'm gonna do save. And so these are just different saving options. I tend to go with a ping 24, it's a little bit higher resolution. It takes a little bit longer to load. So all web designers cringed when I just said that, but the value is that you're not gonna lose any of these details that are important at this point. There we go, click save, and it's gonna save in a web version that is really, really great for loading things onto any digital web platform. And there you have it, how to overlay an image into a screen, stock photography. Thanks for joining us.